Paramaribo, capital of Suriname, South American outpost of the Free Dutch, now cooperating with the United States and Brazil. Here, Netherlands Marines form the nucleus of a rapidly growing military force. In American-built tanks, they patrol this vital gateway to the Caribbean. Alert for any attack from sea, land, or air. Early in the war, the Germans scuttled a ship near the river's mouth in an effort to block navigation. For down this little stream come ships from the important bauxite mines in the interior. But the destruction of that vessel was in vain, and daily traffic increases as freighters ply back and forth through tropical wilds, bringing out the vital aluminum ore so necessary to the manufacture of war machinery. Gun crews keep their weapons ready. Every possible precaution is taken to speed, unhindered, the flow of the precious metal. Mined far inland, the bauxite is brought to the river by train. From heavily guarded plants, it pours into the holds of United Nations ships, bound for the aircraft plants of North America. And as the Free Dutch work day and night to further the United Nations war effort, their Queen Wilhelmina of the Netherlands rides with President Roosevelt to the Washington Navy Yard. Here, by the President's order, under terms of the Lend-Lease Agreement, a new submarine chaser, named for the Queen, is presented to the Dutch Navy. Her Majesty goes aboard and finds a crew of her own countrymen, veterans of the Netherlands fleet, which so valiantly fought the first Japanese attack in the Southwest Pacific. Ready for battle, the little warship is ordered for service with the U.S. Navy, proudly flying the flag of a people who have bowed to their queen, no surrender. 